many of them rooting on Valdez. He did indeed silence them. What does this victory mean to you? Hey, this, mean, this victory mean everything. I told y'all what I was gonna do. I said I'm gonna beat Valdez, Canelo, and Eddie Reynoso. That was my game plan. Beat the whole team and I feel good about it. Much respect to them, no disrespect to them, but that was my game plan. Bad news. Shakur Stevenson fails to make the Ring Magazine top 10 P4P or pound for pound list. That's what I want to talk about in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I already made a video about this, but we back at it. As you guys know, I'm a content creator, so sometimes you're not able to fully express all your thoughts in one specific video. Subscribe so you guys get all the content. Hit the bell notification so you get all the content. Ring Magazine, after Shakur versus Oscar Valdez, they just announced and came up with their official pound for pound Ring Magazine list. Now, before I read you the list, which Shakur Stevenson is not on, mind you that it came out, information came out that Shakur Stevenson, Oscar Valdez, before the fight, it was announced that they were going to be eligible. Whoever were to win that particular fight would now be eligible to fight and win the Ring Magazine title. So I just like on my channel. I always want to set the stage. I always want to let you know what you're truly dealing with. Right. So once again, it was announced the winner of this fight would be the ring magazine 130 pound champion if you don't live under a rock you will know that shakur stevenson won the fight not only did he beat oscar valdez but he beat him decisively convincingly and unanimously it was very easy to see and his face was intact his defense was sharp in fact his face was so intact and not tattered and things he ended up proposing to his girlfriend that you see on the screen so he wasn't worried about nothing he put on a great performance he had celebrities in the house he had jay prince he had his his boys Keyshawn and terrence crawford and as you guys can see he decided to he was in good spirits you know why wouldn't he be now you can see in this engagement photo what is that oh yeah that's right that's the ring magazine belt that he earned in the Oscar Valdez fight. So once again, it's all about clarity. He won the Ring Magazine belt that you guys see right there and Ring Magazine voted after his fight. So I can understand if they came out with a list beforehand and then they said, oh, you know, you didn't make the list because the Valdez fight hadn't happened. So you could see the Ring Magazine list there and Shakur is nowhere in the top 10 crazy this is the following or this is the list as follows one canelo pay they you one pay they alvarez two alexander usik three terence crawford four neyao anui five errol spence six Juan francisco gallo estrada seven vasily lomachenko eight josh taylor nine roman gonzalez and number 10 Kazuro Ayoka out of Japan. Now, this is clearly bogus. This is exactly what they did, the Ring Magazine, Ring TV, to another black American fighter who was also Ring Magazine champion. And that person was Jermail Charlo, who again is getting ready to fight for all the belts. Now, if you guys have followed my channel for some time, I told you and I've called out these things incessantly on the channel. And the funny thing is, when it comes to the the obvious bias and favoritism, you know, is it doesn't even seem to make any sense. This is why I decided to do another video. You have Shakur Stevenson. And he does not, even as Ring Magazine champion, he does not make the list. But Kazuto Ayoka does. In at number eight is Josh Taylor, a Caucasian fighter from Scotland, I believe, right? 
And Josh Taylor, he was undisputed, or he is undisputed. He said he's moving up. That's why I said was, because I don't know if he's truly moving up to 147, like he said. But in his last performance, many would even argue that he should have lost. And it was a hometown cooking, you know what I mean? And I get the fact and respect. Josh Taylor has a great, you know, he he's fought some good guys, you know what I mean? So his resume is good. And at 140, he became undisputed. So respects to that. But if we're doing updated pound for pound list and Shakur Stevenson just beat in a shutout fashion, Oscar Valdez and Josh Taylor, many people think he truly lost and his face was all cut up and beat up. You know, I'll probably at the in this video, I'll, I'll show you an after picture of the Valdez fight. And keep in mind, Valdez is a threatening puncher and a knockout artist who there were a lot of people saying that Valdez had what it took to knock out Shakur before the fight. He has a great trainer in Eddie Reynoso. Canelo was giving him tips. Canelo showed up ringside, etc. And Shakur Stevenson, I'll show you his face, and then I'll show you a picture of Josh Taylor's face after their fight. Now, the face test is not the only thing. Some people have scar tissue. Some people bruise easy, whatever. But it's, it is... Um, an introduction to the fact that old media continues to put Lomachenko and Josh Taylor on the pound for pound list and guys like that, Triple G at the time, right? And you look at some of the fights, their faces are all beat up and boxing is not just about offense. It's just not about knocking out people. It's not about just hit, hit, hit. It's about hit and don't get hit. Shakur is one of the best, literally very best at doing that. He's touching you. The Ring Magazine, basically one of the persons on the voting committee says, we're not picking Shakur Stevenson because he basically cheated. Even though he was not actually deducted or docked a point from the official referee, the person in the specific article he says, I don't like Shakur being on the top, top 10 pound for pound because he was using his arm and extending it out, stiff arming. And, you know, basically an excuse. He was he was using his arm to probe and, and reach and measure distance. And for for that reason, Valdez couldn't get on the inside. But truth be told, Canelo Alvarez is number one on the ring magazine list. And he did that very thing versus Caleb Plant. And if you watch that fight, you can prove it. I can prove it, right? Caleb Plant was the taller fighter. He was the guy who was pretty slick and you would imagine would try to stay away from Canelo's power and, you know, left and right hand and hooks and stuff like that. And Canelo was using his his fists to blind, like to stick out and, and blind Caleb Plant. And then he would come with some sneaky shots. But Canelo, had, who was also failed a drug test, unlike Shakur Stevenson, Canelo has no problem being placed number one on the pound for pound list so the difference being is canelo has failed a ped test that's not a matter of opinion that's an absolute fact meanwhile shakur is fighting a a guy in the same gym as canelo who's also failed a ped test and then they try to cover it up with fentermine and that's oscar valdez so you know anytime you fail a ped test there's always going to be that asterisk by what wins are clean or are you clean in the future? Things like that. None of that mattered in this fight because Shakur Stevenson did the dang thing and, you know, nullified and neutralized, even knocking down Oscar Valdez. So it's a travesty that you see this continue to happen. And it particularly happens against black and Cuban fighters. You know, if you don't fight in a certain fight style that I guess old media wants you to fight in, or if you're too good or you're brash or whatever their reason is, like Shakur Stevenson, I think Shakur Stevenson, he's a young, black, rich kid from Newark. And not only is he good, but he's also letting you know that he knows he's good. And I think that it makes a lot of people that are racist in boxing feel threatened, you know, because he's like, man, I beat Oscar Valdez, Eddie Reynoso, Canelo. I beat the whole team. You heard immediately when he did it. I played it at the beginning. Immediately when he said that, you heard people in the crowd start booing. People don't like that, but I, my advice to Shakur, I've been in the game, you know, longer than he's been a pro. I was covering his fights in the Olympics, you know, on the channel. My advice, just do you. You're not going to be able to make everybody like you. He's young. You know, he's, he's, he's just a great fighter. 
not everyone's going to like you. Same thing with the guy next to him, Keyshawn Davis. Just do you because you're not going to be able to get everyone on your side, nor should you try, you know, just keep winning and they have no choice but to respect it. You know, channels like myself and others will hold down Shakur Stevenson and let y'all know the real, but it's a, it's a travesty that Shakur Stevenson, oh, he has the Ali shirt on too. It's a travesty that Shakur Stevenson is not being considered by everybody on the, the top 10 list. And it, it just goes to show you how rigged boxing is. Shout out to Shakur's grandfather for believing in him and instilling obviously some good boxing in ability in him. But it, it's just sad because at the end of the day, we know how good he is. And guys, um, we have American imprints, like companies, entities, and they rather put all foreign fighters like Kazuto Ayoka, who the public doesn't even really know who he is. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that's the only way you should get on the pound for pound list is if people know you, but wouldn't that just be a better look to have a very talented American, you know, some people even liken him to Floyd Mayweather. Oscar De La Hoya compared his performance to Mayweather Canelo, things like that. But instead, the whole list is hogged up with mostly foreign fighters. Okay, Canelo's from Mexico, Usyk's from the Ukraine, uh, Inouye's from Japan, Estrada's from Mexico, Lomachenko's from the Ukraine, Josh Taylor's from Scotland, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, he's from Nicaragua, and then you have in at number 10, Ayoka, who's from Japan, right? So you literally only have two American fighters who are both black, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. And I told you guys, it's like there's a two black maximum on old media and big box media's pound for pound list and rankings. Ever since Floyd and Ward retired, this has been the case. The only two black people that seem to be able to even enter have been Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Wilder, he was never on the list, even though some people's list had Tyson Fury, right? Even though Wilder had 10 title defenses, he was never good enough. Jamel Charlo, even before the Undisputed, and now if he, like, so what is, is Charlo, if he becomes Undisputed versus Castano, is he going to pop up on the list? Because he'll have all the belts. How can he not be pound for pound, you know? So I'm really rooting for Jamel Charlo. I hope he knocks out Brian Castano. No love lost. I like Castano, but I think that's best for boxing. And we'll see how it plays out. May the best man win. And, you know, it is what it is. Shakur Stevenson, what does he got to do? He has the Ring Magazine title. He just fought two champions back to back. And he stopped one of them. And I really think he could have stopped Valdez if he, if he really put the pedal to the metal and, and took an unnecessary risk. But he dropped him and won 12 rounds out of 12. And he, he didn't fail a drug test like Valdez. Right? His coach is not as... Um, you know, known as Canelo, Canelo and Eddie Reynoso, they get the prestige and trainer of the year, fighter of the year combination. And Shakur is working with family and K Karam, who doesn't get as much recognition. And he still made it look easy. Man, what is this telling y'all? What is this state for boxing? You let me know that in the comment section. Shakur, keep your head up. You're pound for pound to the real ones. You're you should be on the list for sure. Subscribe to the channel. As always, hey, comment and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it. Hibernation Fives by Kanichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation Fives adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation Fives. Link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation.